cool. Injury prevention, and I alluded to this on one of the earlier slides, I said the risk of injury goes up the more dehydrated you become. And the athletic training staff sure doesn't want you to be, get injured, much less to be a dehydrated for that And performance goes down. There's no doubt about it that your ability to perform goes down. If you're 1% down in fluid, you're thirsty. All right? And if you're thirsty, your ability to perform goes down about 10%. Okay? Your response time on something, your ability to think, to say I should move this way or move this way, to catch a ball, whatever it might be, or to get off the offensive line or whatever it might be, goes down. And so you've got to make sure that you're staying hydrated. And easily, your sweat losses can equal a two liter bottle of soda, if you will, a two liter bottle a day or more. That's a lot. Now what happens physiologically when we sweat? What happens? All right, you start sweating, and because you're losing fluid, your blood volume decreases. Because your blood volume decreases, your heart rate starts to go up, and the heart is pounding harder and harder to try to compensate, to get that oxygen to the muscles, right? Your body temperature goes up as well. Like I said, your cardiovascular function is going to decrease because you're going to get less oxygen and less nutrients to the muscles that are working hard. What that means to you is that you're going to rely on those anaerobic versus the aerobic, okay, oxygen without oxygen systems. And bottom line is you're going to start cramping and you're going to become fatigued. So there's this whole physiological thing. We know we don't drink. We get cramps and fatigue. But there's a reason behind it, okay? And understanding that reason is going to want to make you understand why you have to drink. In the big perspective, your muscle strength goes down, your stamina, your speed, your energy, and like I said, your cognitive process. There's a most recent study that looked at Division I basketball players, and they were able to look at these D1 basketball players. I was telling you about this yesterday. And they were measuring their cognitive process, being able to think on the court, dehydrated versus, well, it was actually non-dehydrated versus different stages of dehydration. And it was a clear-cut indicator that the more dehydrated these basketball, these D1 basketball players were, the slower they were, and they were making less and less smart plays on the, on the field or on the, on the court. Okay? And the risk of injury goes up. Now, if you're a person who gets cramps easily or you're like, you know, I just got one right now, most likely it's due to dehydration. It's not because you didn't have the banana in the morning or because of this or the other thing. Um, you guys watched the Super Bowl this past year. Leslie Visser was on the sidelines, and she was down there interviewing. I forget which team it was. And she said, oh, and you're at cramping. And then she got back on the, on the uh, teleprompter, and she said, well, and the reason he's cramping is he didn't have his banana this morning. You know? This is not the Super Bowl. I'm like, oh, lady, that's probably not why. You know? You probably didn't drink enough. You know? So. So when should you drink? Okay, you guys, you should be drinking all day long. All right? And I'm not saying put the garden hose to your mouth and swallow, but staying hydrated. Your pee should be clear and lightly yellow colored. All right? You get up in the morning after being in bed for six or eight or ten hours, depending upon what day of the week it is, it's going to be darker. Okay? There's no doubt about that. But your pee should be clear and it should be lightly yellow. Okay? A couple of hours before exercise is what you need to know. So if you guys have a softball game at five or you play football at what, one o'clock typically, whatever it might be, it takes two hours for your body, all right, to clear excess fluid. Okay, it takes 90 minutes is what I mean to say, not two hours. So the game is at, let's say, 5 o'clock p.m. We want to make sure that we're staying well hydrated through the day, but that we make sure that we're focusing hydration up until about <coughs> 3 o'clock. Because from 3 to 4.30, our kidneys and the rest of our systems are going to say, okay, extra fluid that I don't really need to store that I'm going to need for this event, I'm going to pee out. Because that way, Come 5 o'clock for the game, because we've all gone to the bathroom at 4.30. Come 5 o'clock for the game, we're ready to roll, we're well hydrated, and we're not going to have to pee or feel uncomfortable. Okay? So what you need to think about is that two hours before the game, is it doesn't mean, oh my god, the lady said to stop drinking. Uh-uh. You want to keep sipping on fluids and that type of thing. Focus on hydration up to two hours beforehand, and during that two hours, keep drinking and having sips and so forth. Then, the half an hour before the game starts, you can start drinking again because when the whistle blows, the gun goes, the puck drops, whatever it is, you guys are going to have a hard time keeping up staying hydrated. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Questions at all, you guys? All right. Am I boring the heck out of you? All right, good answer. Otherwise, I'd give you one of these. <laughs> all right. So here's the other piece. 
every 15 minutes. And it's easy for me to stand up here and say that you guys should drink, you know, six ounces of fluid every 15 minutes. Okay? Think about this. You're on the sidelines or wherever you're at. You take a gulp of fluid, it's one ounce. All right? So if you can get five or six gulps of fluid in every 15 minutes, you're going to try to maintain hydration. Okay? After activity, and I'm sure you guys have weighed yourselves before and after. I know that the athletic training staff does that for you. You want to make sure that you're getting two or three cups of fluid after each pound loss. So if you're out there, you're 170, and you actually drank a fair amount while you were playing, but you're still down a couple pounds, okay? You still drank a fair amount, but you're still down two pounds. You want to make sure that you drink at least 150% um, of what your, your needs are, okay? 100 to 150%, and that's why the two to three cups of water. Okay, for most activities, less than an hour, you don't need to have a sports drink, all right? I like the little kids when they go out and play soccer, you know, and then they have donuts at the end, they play for 15 minutes and they're all drinking Gatorade, right? You guys are a different breed than that. You guys are really good athletes. If it is super hot, okay, if you're really intense activity, if you're playing golf and it's a five hour day and by God, you started, it was really nice, but then it just got really, really hot, whatever it might be, or in those those workouts for football. What other sports are here? We've got soccer, I've got softball. What other sports are here, you guys? Water polo. Water polo. Okay, yeah, there's another one where you guys are sweat, sweat, sweating, and you don't know it necessarily until it's thirst, right? So, what other sports, you guys? Track. Track, okay. Basketball? All right. So, think about super hot activities and think about really intense workouts. If it's up to that for about an hour, a sports drink is an ideal thing to have, and I'll explain why. Typically, if you're exercising, you guys are out playing soccer with your friends or whatever it might be, your pickup game of this, and you're playing for an hour, hour and a half, you probably only need water. All right? But the rule of thumb is about 60 to 90 minutes. You want to make sure that you get your sports drink. All right? A couple things down here. Improve performance, fight dehydration, and decrease recovery time. First and foremost, decrease recovery time, meaning the time that it takes for me to do my activity today, to recover to be able to play tomorrow. Sports drinks decreases that time. Okay? Fight dehydration, we know. All right? Fluids has carbohydrate, which we talked about earlier as to why it's so important, and has sodium and potassium, two electrolytes which you tend to sweat out a whole lot. And improve performance.